the one thing that I really feel like the Lord's taught me in this season is like your purpose does not pause and that he is so intentional in where he places us. I kind of started writing down like, why am I so discontent in this corporate world? Like God has clearly placed me here. Like opportunity after opportunity had kind of presented themselves to create this career for me. And um, I felt like he had me there, but I didn't understand why. What's up? What's up, incredible people? I love y'all so much. My name is Emma Mae McDaniel, and I'm so honored and so grateful to welcome y'all to the Have You Heard podcast. Guys, we are in for a special treat today as we have the lovely Hope Brigham Harris, and we are going to be talking about our happy place and what all of that entails. So friends, grab your headphones and let's get into the word. Hope, welcome to the Have You Heard podcast. I love you so much. I love you so much. I'm so excited to be here today. Yay. What is something that made you smile today? Oh my goodness. Okay, so this morning my husband's out of town Uh and my dog Sadie loves my husband. But since he is out of town, I got all of the cuddles and the love this morning when I woke up and it was so sweet. (laughs) So she put her head on my pillow and was like licking my face and I'm like, This is what I miss out on when Will's home. (laughs) Don't you just love dogs? I do. I was like, I could just stay in this moment all day. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I so relate. I've never checked this, so I need to have somebody double check me. But I've heard that, like, the Hebrew word for dog is, like, heart. And just to think, like... Like, That's God so literally, I feel like God actually legit intended dogs to be yeah. man's best friend. <laughs> they are so sweet. And I'm like, I'm she convinced. just knew that I needed a little yeah. morning greeting and pick me up. <laughs> so. Yeah, they're always happy to see you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What about them. you? What made you smile? What made me smile today? Hmm. Let me see. I think... Okay, so uh, this is really funny because we're both talking about our dogs, (laughs) but okay, me and Josh have been like on this mission to train Remy, our our puppy, and like doing the different tricks, and so we've taught him to shake, we've taught him to, I don't know if you've seen this thing on Instagram, but it's like the whisper bark. No. So we've taught him to whisper bark. So it's not oh like this gosh. all out bull bark. It's just this little tender bark. And then this week I taught him to lay down and it was, it's so fun. It's so, I got three blueberries out of the fridge this morning and asked him to do all three things and he oh got all gosh. three blueberries. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it made me so happy. I was so proud. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I taught you this. <laughs> yeah, like you are so smart, Remy. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. I love that. Oh, so today we are talking about our happy place. And I really just wanted to ask you, I felt like this was so fitting. Where is one of your like ideal vacation spots like if you were to go anywhere anywhere where would you go where would you plan your vacation to oh my goodness so I studied abroad in Switzerland in college no way yes and it was beautiful stayed there for the year Will and I were supposed to go during COVID and obviously got canceled so I think that would be really cool or like Jackson home Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Like, <gasps> Will and I love going there, and it kind of has the same, like, Switzerland vibe. <laughs> yes. Okay, wait. I I love Switzerland because when I was in high school, my my family, we hosted a foreign exchange student oh, no from way. Switzerland. That's and so cool. And she is so near and dear to my heart, but I've yet yeah. to visit. So I cannot wait We've to visit go. Switzerland one day. We'll yeah. totally have to go. <laughs> and do. Jackson Hole, Hope... I love Jackson Hole. Me and Josh actually went a couple of weeks ago and what? like drove I, I through. Know this. Yeah. I know. I I don't know why I hadn't told you that, but we like drove through Yellowstone oh. and like Isn't it ate beautiful? pizza in front of the Tetons. Just stunning. It's yeah. so beautiful. It is so breathtaking. Oh my it's goodness. Just quiet and I don't yeah. know. I feel like I can just really experience God's beauty and just be in awe of him. Because everywhere you look, it's like, oh my goodness, this is like real life. Yeah. yeah. I know. We were like driving past all of the 
the Grand Tetons. And yes. I, I looked at Josh and I was like, you know what I've been thinking about this whole time that we have been here? I said, I've been thinking about that statement that Jesus made whenever he said, if you have faith, just the size of a mustard seed, like yes. you can say to this mountain, move and it shall be moved. And I know that he was like describing the magnitude of how like, with God, nothing is impossible and there is power right. in the God that we're putting our faith in. But like to see that visual of like, that to say so move yeah. to this mountain and it shall move. It just shows like the magnitude that literally nothing is too big for our God and he's not intimidated oh, by it. I yes. so agree with you though. Just looking at creation, it just, my creator is so mighty. I know. And you're like, how did he come up with all of this stuff? I mean, like, yeah, you run into, see bears there. You see the elk, you see moose, you see, it's just like, oh my gosh, where am I right now? This is amazing. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, if and anyone lives there, I'm jealous. That's listening. Like, you, <laughs> yeah, you are so blessed. Yeah, invite us over, please. <laughs> yeah, like that's literally your backyard. That's yeah. insane. <laughs> I know, that is crazy. So was that one of your happy places too, now that you've been? Yeah, that's one yeah. of my happy places. It definitely yeah. is. It's hard to beat. It, it More is. More like Rosemary, like on 30A, like in Okay, Florida. I was about to say the beach yes. too. It's very restful. It like is. I do very little at the beach yeah. and it's the best. It, it is. <laughs> well, I just did a baby moon there like a few weeks ago. Oh, it was awesome. That's right. I did nothing hardly. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. Oh, well, talking about like all of these lovely places that we love to go to that bring so much rest that bring so much joy that almost in a way just refresh us and like remind us of our like just so many things to be excited about and yeah. passionate about I think it there is something really like important about acknowledging the fact that we're not in those places every single day Yes, and very true. <laughs> I think sometimes we can fall into this slump of thinking that like my excitement, my rest, my passion for my purpose can only be found whenever I'm in those certain locations or when I have that certain job title or when I'm in that certain season. And I would love to know like when you're in your everyday, when you're not in Switzerland and when you're not yeah. in Jackson Hole or you're not on your yeah. baby moon with your husband yeah. in Rosemary 30A, like, like, have you ever felt discontent or struggled to like find relief and rest and purpose in those everyday kind of places? And how did you navigate that? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I guess a little bit about me. I've been working in the corporate world for about six years uh, immediately entered the corporate world coming out of college, graduated from Pepperdine in 2017 and kind of have been hitting the ground running. And really, probably about a year ago, I just started becoming really discontent with like the corporate world. And mm -hmm. I kind of felt like I was called to ministry, but nothing was really working out where I was going to be able to step out of my corporate job and, you know, I'm still in it today. But really, I, I felt like I had to start doing like a heart check of like, okay, I think it is so easy for us to start believing that our purpose pauses. And that's the one thing that I really feel like the huh. Lord's taught me in this season is like your purpose does not pause and that he is so intentional in where he places us. And so really, I, I kind of started writing down like, why am I so discontent in this corporate world? Like God has clearly placed me here like opportunity after opportunity had kind of presented themselves to create this career for me. And um, I felt like he had me there, but I didn't understand why. I was like, I, I want to like yeah. proclaim you and corporate isn't really a place where you're like <laughs> preaching the gospel all day long. <laughs> and it's, you know, you kind of have to be careful about how you come across and you don't want to offend anyone. You know, there's kind of a lot going on in that space. And so I started realizing and God started showing me like maybe I was just putting him in a box of how he could work where I was. And so I really started trying to figure out, okay, I want to you know, pour into other people, encourage them. And I want to be able to start, you know, sharing his name at work. So one of the things that I was able to do was find a group of girls that I knew 
you know, were interested in having a relationship with the Lord or had a relationship with the Lord. And so I started doing like a Bible study before work with work people. So that was a really cool way to kind of like start bridging my passion with where I found myself. And I think the Lord is so intentional of like placing on your heart, like what he's called you to do. And so it was crazy that morning. I mean, I've always been kind of nervous sharing my faith at work just because, um, Again, it kind of feels like an odd place to share, to kind of merge the two. And so the day that I decided, okay, I'm going to step out and do this. Hopefully, you know, everyone takes this the right way. I'm going to pray about this. I literally had never met two of the girls in person. I had just talked to them over Zoom because of COVID and all of that. Ran into them in person in the office that day. Like never had met them. I'm like, oh my goodness. So I was actually able to ask those two girls in person, like, Hey, it's so nice to meet you for the first time. You've been on my heart. I want to invite you to do this Bible study with me. And it was, it was seriously MMA. It was so cool. And I think um, what I do, like from a practical perspective, when I feel this way, because I mean, it still pops up here and there, is just trying to understand yeah. like what's missing. Like what, what do I feel like the Lord has placed on my heart? Like, is this a discontentment that like is a heart problem? Or is this a discontentment of like, I need some, to do some action here. The Lord's calling me to something. And then try to figure out, like, what are some baby steps? It doesn't have to be like me, you know, preaching during lunch. But, like, how can I start incorporating the Lord in my day-to-day? Because I feel like that was what was making me discontent in my corporate role. And so it's mm-hmm. been really cool to see how he's shown up. And I feel like because of that one baby step of doing the Bible study, now I do feel more confident, like, mentioning my faith at work and um, speaking about it in a way that isn't, like, forceful or aggressive, but is just inviting just like he is. Yeah. So I feel like that's one example of when I felt discontent, but I've obviously experienced a lot of discontentment in my life, as I'm sure you have too. Yeah, I think everybody has. And I love, I just, there's so much that you said that I'm encouraged by. And one of the things is the reality that I think sometimes we can, like you said, put God in a box and think that like, okay, this is, like, what is the signs that some people will put in their homes? It's like faith, family, friends, or, <laughs> you know, and I feel like we sometimes yeah. categorize our lives that way. We, we do, have yeah. our faith and then we have our home and then we have our friends and then we have our work, but they can't, faith doesn't go over here. Yeah, they and don't that's, merge, but they, yeah. But yeah. they do. Like when yeah. I give my life to God, I give my life to God. Yes. That encompasses every aspect of who I am and what I do and where I go. And so this is such an encouragement to hear from you that in my day to day, it's how I act. It's how I respond. It's how I navigate a zoom call. It's how I, it's how I am intentional to ask people how they're doing as I make my way to my cubicle or my office. It's the, it's just a, it's who I am. Um, and being so like on guard from that lie the enemy would love for us to cling to that exactly. it ha- it's something that is just a part of my life when in actuality it it's either all or nothing of my life it yeah. overflows into every aspect and when I'm walking in step with the spirit he shows me like he sh- he leads me in my conversations in the day and he's working through me and shining mm-hmm. a light through me whenever and I've had people come up and say I was so encouraged whenever you smiled at me. I was like, you're like, what? (laughs) That's so simple. You know, it's so simple. And it's like, wow, praise God that like just in my day to day encounters with people, God is being glorified as we walk in step with his spirit. No, 100%. And I've found myself too, like literally as I'm driving into work, like praying in my car, like God, I'm showing up today. This is where Mm -hmm. you've placed me. Like, let me shine my light and position me in a way where I'm able to, your spirit's able to lead me to say exactly what you plan, exactly what you prepared. I know this day was already laid out before me, before I was even born. Like, I'm going to show up and I just pray for the strength and the boldness and the uh, wisdom to step into that today. And it's been interesting Mm -hmm. because a lot of the times, like you said with the smile, it is very small things that I think impact people or make people think, or even, you know, later, maybe you have a conversation where they want to understand why you believe something or why you're different, you know? 
Yeah. Even mentioning like weekend plans of, hey, how was your weekend? You know, I always try to say it was great. I did church. I did these things just like casually mentioning, you know, the Lord in some way or organically Mm -hmm. um, is something that I try to do because I don't always have the opportunity to like, you know, (laughs) really like encourage from the word. Yeah, that's, oh, I'm encouraged by you, friend. How is the Bible study going? Were people just, good? were there people honestly just waiting for something like that and you were an answer to their prayer? This one crazy story happened. So we were, Um, well, you know, Bentonville, like coffee shops get packed here, guys. Oh, yes. (laughs) Even on a Monday morning. Yes, exactly. (laughs) It's like you can't even find a spot. And we meet at 730, so it's like starting to get crazy. But I actually got to meet uh, a new friend through this. So there was nowhere to sit. And I felt kind of awkward about this. I was like, oh my gosh, we're sitting at a table that someone else is already sitting at. Like, are they going to be annoyed that we're like chatting and this person <laughs> looks to be working? It was crazy. We, the girls started talking to me about, um, I'm having a baby, guys, in January. So we were talking about the baby. Guys, Another so girl sweet. mentioned, yeah, it's so soon, right? Another girl mentioned she was having a baby. All of a sudden, this beautiful girl at the end of the table who I thought we were probably, um, like bothering this whole time. You know, I was like, kind of like, oh, I'm trying to talk so quiet. She pops up and is like, I am pregnant. Then she ends up exchanging phone numbers and she's joined our group and she doesn't even work for the same company and just happened to like, it's been so cool. MMA. Oh like, it my has been goodness. Insane. I'm like, what the heck? Like something that I, I think that also shows too, like the Lord has a plan. And even if you feel like very awkwardly positioned, um, like me being at a table with a stranger at the ends. Like he has a plan and yeah. um, really all you have to do is show up. Like, I think we mm-hmm. put so much pressure on, like we have to have it all figured out. Um, but he, I mean, he makes a way when we don't even see the way or think there is a way. <laughs> That's so true. But yeah, now but... she's a part of our group, which is so cool. That's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And I so <laughs> agree with what you said. Like, the yeah. fact that we sometimes get so in our head that we're yeah. like not going to say something perfectly or we don't know oh, how I was freaking out. all ins and <laughs> yeah. outs. And I really think that sometimes that keeps us from doing anything at all. Yes. Like we're so afraid that we're going to mess up or we're so intimidated by the fact that we don't know every step that's to come. Therefore, we don't take a single step, yeah. period. And God's like, no, I, I will show you what you need to do when you need to do it. Just trust me and be obedient and watch me do what only I can do and yes. blow your mind in the most beautiful, incredible kind of way. And after I was like, oh my goodness, did this just really happen? <laughs> like, I just sat down and thought, you know, I was going to a Bible study. So yeah, it's it's been really cool. Wow. And I've been so encouraged and just would encourage anyone that's listening, like whatever you feel like is on your heart. I mean, just a baby step, even if it's inviting one other person to do something or, yeah. um, you know, chasing, taking one step towards your dream. I mean, I think we don't really have to have it all figured out. And that's mm-hmm. the planner in me freaks out over that. But I'm learning <laughs> and he's really teaching me in this season that, you know, I could plan all I want, but it's his will will be done and his plan is much greater than the plan that I could even create for myself. The safety of resting in the arms of your father, knowing that he's got you. And it can sometimes feel really intimidating to not know what's ahead. It can feel daunting, but God is so good. And he's like, just trust me. Like I will give you this day, my daily bread. And because I am with you, you have everything that you need, yeah. including perfect peace in the midst of not knowing everything. Yes, which is so good, so, so true, relieving. It does yeah. just relieve the burden of yeah, just feeling like you have to have everything in control. But whenever I think too of this concept of being in your happy place and how that actually doesn't have to be a certain location, but it can be found in your day to day as you walk yeah. with the Lord. I think one of the ways that that is not our reality, like we do think that our happy place isn't where we currently are, is because of a very well-known struggle that is comparison. And, (laughs) oh girl, I think that there are so many of us who, honestly, probably all of us at certain points in our life, who we can't 
like walk in contentment or we aren't able to walk in contentment and confidence and we're not able to see the beauty of where God has us in the present because Mm -hmm. we're so focused on where he has the girl beside us. And so instead of enjoying where we are, we're consumed with where we're not. What advice would you give to the girl who doesn't think she's in a happy her it doesn't think that she can enjoy where she's at because she's not where the girl next to her is y'all i am so excited christmas is just around the corner and i know that that can sometimes bring lots of stress because we don't know what to get our friends and family but i want to let you know the mma collection is fully stocked with hats socks the coziest sweatshirts and t-shirts as well as all of my books and you can get all of them in the link below i love y'all so much So I actually think of a conversation that me and you had recently um, at a coffee shop in Bentonville where you said you and your family go by, and this really hit me, it's three words, that you guys go by this quote, like, success is obedience. Mm -hmm. And that really hit me because as someone, I personally do struggle with comparison a lot. I feel like I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform a certain way at work or to, um, you know, get the next opportunity and to kind of see what's going on. And uh, to be honest, it's been kind of weird because like I have a book that's out, but I'm still exactly where God has placed me before that. Like, and I think a Mm -hmm. lot about um, even the story of David, you know, basically I cannot imagine how he was comparing himself. Like he was called to be the next king, but then he found himself right back where like the sheep were, like he went right back to tending his sheep. And I think one, my advice to the girl who feels this way and one, know you're not alone and know too, that even though I'm speaking from experience, I still struggle with this. I'm on a social media fast for like a month and a half right now. Um, But anyways, I think just knowing that like the preparation and Mm -hmm. the work that he's doing in your life right now, like that is success successful because that is being obedient to him and like allowing him to mold you, allowing him to just come into your life and fill your life. I think that is one thing that I'm really learning right now is I may not be where I thought I would be. Like I'm right back where I was when this whole journey started. Um, but there's work to be done. And as long as the Lord has me placed here and whoever's listening placed where they are, like he's not done and he's still doing something. And Mm -hmm. I think we may never know what he's doing or never know what's next. Um, but we can like rest in his promise that he doesn't leave us and that he is always with us and that he is constantly at work. Um, and I also think of the story of Esther too, where, the whole book it never mentions God's name, which is super interesting. That is But you can see God's fingerprints all over it. And so I think at times mm-hmm. we just yeah. have to focus on our lane. And when we, we focus on our lane, seeing Jesus at the very front of it and just running that race and knowing that he, even though we don't necessarily always think he's giving us his best, we have to just believe that he's giving us his best. Um, and I... I've actually been writing my uh, next book. And so one thing that I actually just wrote about, I know, on confusion, guys. um, One thing I just wrote about is like the very beginning of time, how the enemy like tempted humans. And essentially Mm -hmm. he came and said like, did God really say that? And I think so often, I mean, that relates to anything we're struggling with, but it's like, did God really say he was going to give me his best? Did God really say like he had plans for me? And I just want to remind whoever's listening, like God has plans for you. God has not left you. You're exactly in the seat that he prepared for you. Like not just a random seat you found, but a seat that like he put in place and position, positioned you in for a time like this. And he's doing more than you may see and definitely more than you can ever imagine exactly where you are today. Hope, that is so encouraging. I actually was, I love Jenny Allen. She is a dear, like I learn from her all the time. And I was listening to one of her podcasts earlier today, actually, and she was interviewing Um, someone and they were talking about how the Lord really the Lord really cares about the root of things in our life and they were discussing how when we go to the Lord and we express these 
concerns that we have and like these scenarios that we're walking through and maybe things that we're discontent with like such as god i'm single and i would really love to be dating or god i have this job description and i really would love that job description or god i'm i'm currently living in this place but i would really love to live in that place like just this lack of enjoying where you currently are and this discontentment but they were talking about how when we go to the Lord with those things, instead of the Lord just fixing the situation that we're in, instead of him bringing change to our current scenario, like the Lord is so gracious that he goes to the root and he like, it's like, how does that make you feel? How does that make you feel that you're in that place? How does it make you feel that, that she's in that place? How does it make you feel that, you maybe aren't where you thought you would be five years ago. And a lot of times we can respond with like, I honestly feel afraid. Like I'm afraid that I'm, it's not going to turn out the way I hoped. I'm afraid that, that like, I'm not, I'm not as good as she is. I'm afraid that you're holding out on me. I'm afraid that you're not as good as you say you are. I'm like, and so that's what Jenny and this guy were talking about, like the fear route and how God then goes to that place. Like, let well, okay, then let's bring clarity to the fear that you're walking through because then that's going to bring clarity to your perspective of me, to yourself and to others around you. And your scenario may not change for a long time, but your heart posture did because you went to the root with the father. And so I was like, that conversation I was encouraged by came back up to my mind as you were talking about that, that like, isn't that so good? <laughs> he, you're right. Cause I think a lot of the times I look at times when I was comparing myself, there was some heart work that he did. You know, there was um, times where he was like, Hey, your circumstances have not changed, but for some reason I felt totally different because of the heart work that he did and the transformation he did in my own life mm -hmm. through his word and through time with him that I was able to, you know, still be in the same place, but to have a totally different perspective and a, you know, kind of pivot. Yes. And I think all of these things that we're talking about just kind of being a little blinded to the beauty of where we're at and therefore letting discontentment kind of settle and then comparing ourselves to where we thought we would be and comparing ourselves to the girl next to us and we let that kind of settle and we sit in that and then we may start getting like just tired of where we are and almost burnt out in a way of what we're doing in our day-to-day -day rhythms because we again are blinded to the beauty and the purpose that we have in it. Have you ever, have you ever felt that way? And how did you navigate that? I felt burnt out more times than I can count. And it's kind of interesting about two years ago, the only conference I've ever been asked to speak at or have spoken at, um, I had had it on my heart to speak randomly, you know, a few weeks later, got asked to speak. It was a local conference in Bentonville and I just said, yes, cause I'm like, yes, I'm, you know, it's been on my heart, whatever. And at this time I was super burnt out. So to paint the picture, the whole way I got started, um, with having like an Instagram community was essentially, I was super lonely post-grad and I started, I knew no one would know me like at all. And so I started like a clay earring company cause I'm like, I can just, bring positivity. Um, we gave back to you version. We did a whole bunch of little collections wow. weekly. And so I started this company that, and I still had my corporate job and this company grew really quickly. And then I had my job and I was super burnt out. Like, I'm just like, what am I doing? And so anyways, this is around the time I got, or right at the time I got asked to go speak at this conference. So I said, yes, fast forward. She tells me the topic is on grace. And it hit me as I was trying to prepare for this message <laughs> that I myself had never allowed myself to receive God's grace because I felt like I needed to earn it. Um, and I, this, to your point, just like we kind of talked about and building on that, um, like that God goes to the root, yeah. the root of my problem with burnout and, um, you know, even like comparison is that I felt like people only liked me or loved me for what I did, not like who I was. And That's so, huge hope. yes, I'm like, 
I struck, I mean, I had gone to church my whole life and never until like two years ago had really allowed myself to, I feel like, receive God's grace and just like as I'm learning about grace and as I continue to learn about grace, you know, I think the whole point of grace is it is something that we can all earn and it is something that was only gifted to us through God sending his son to die on the cross for us, which is insane. And so anyways, with burnout, I feel like as I kind of went on that journey of like people only like me for who I, what I do, not who I am, I actually silently, back to also success as obedience, I silently seriously quit my clay earring company. I had been doing it for over a year. I didn't even like post while I was quitting, just stepped away. And wow. it, it was really um, hard because I was making quite a, like transparently like quite a bit of money at one point it was making more than my corporate job was making but i, I just wow. felt like the lord was saying like hope like this has served its purpose you need to step away and i didn't want to step away because again i'm like i gotta earn i gotta do i gotta keep going i gotta run myself like a machine and i will tell you like week over week my sales would just kept dropping and it became so clear that i'm like okay lord like i see like i need to step away i don't know what you have planned i don't know what you're up to but i'm going to step away and that is pretty much around the time that i got the whole this is my happy place book deal so had i not stepped away i wouldn't have had the time or the capacity to be able to write and so all of that to say with burnout i think what i've learned wow. in my life recently is just like no amount of rest can stop his plans for us no amount of like stepping away from what he is putting on your heart is like not uh fruitful in this season you know like none of that is going to stop what he has planned and if he is calling you to a season of rest and a season of stillness like trust him he's gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to refresh and you know i even think about how the Lord is our shepherd and how he leads us, like we talked about yesterday, even just how he leads us, um, yeah. you know, to the still waters and the pastures that are just calm and quiet. And he provides a space for us to rest. I just would say if you're in this, like I almost do inventory of what all is on my plate, you know, like what's all on my plate, what, mm -hmm. what is fruitful in my life and what is not. And then if you have to step away from something that kind of feels scary, just trust him in it. You know, even right now I've been away from social media like a month and a half and it feels weird. I feel like I should be there, but I'm, I know he'll, this is what he's called me to do and that he's, um, doing work and allowing me to be refreshed and not feel so burnt out. So that that's just kind yeah. of what I do. And then I have to force myself sometimes to step away and just trust that his plan's greater. Yes. It makes me think of earlier in the year, I, took a month of, I was still working because I was in college. So I still had papers and my internship and all that stuff. But Josh took over the podcast. I stepped away from social media, just all things that we were doing along with school and everything. I just stepped away and really just invested into solitude with the Lord and stillness and trusting him and fighting this lie that I was lazy because I was resting and really learning that like okay those are two different things and if I think I'm lazy every time I'm resting then I'm never going to enjoy rest that I was as I was intended to yes and rest is a it's a gift it's a gift that God provides and he actually exemplified. It was made for us. <laughs> and I remember one night during that month where I just in trust, I took a time of rest. I remember I had started the dishwasher and I had started a load of laundry because there's something so peaceful to me about going to bed with a clean kitchen and the laundry going. I just... It's just very soothing to me and brings about a really lovely sound in our home. But I was brushing my teeth, getting ready to rest. Like I was about to literally go to sleep. I was going to bed and I heard the dishwasher going and I heard the laundry machine going. And I just thought, God, you're working while I rest. You like 
just because I'm I'm stepping back because I'm I'm resting that doesn't mean that you've stopped working in my life like you're actually doing a great work in me you're doing a work that's bigger than me as I just continue to be obedient to you and trust you and I think going back to the root God wants us to know that our identity is in him and him alone and he's like if I were to take this away would you still be as confident in me would you still love people wholeheartedly would you still like walk in the beautiful identity that I've given you knowing that I didn't take your identity away I just took this platform I took this current position I took this current opportunity to the side so that I could show you more of myself and more of what I've made you for and more of what I have for you next oh good yeah I just think there's something beautiful when we do choose to step away and trust him I just every time I have done that in my life which I haven't done it as much as I would like but it's always like his plan is so much greater and so much better And if I had, you know, if you have your plate the way that you keep it, we're going to run ourselves like machines and not be able to show up. And I even think about Elijah in the Bible after he'd been running and um, just got really exhausted. Literally, like an angel comes to him, like gives him food Mm. and has him rest. And I just think it's so beautiful that to your point, like rest is a gift, just like grace is like, it is really cool to think about rest being something that comes from him. And I even think about Jesus saying, like, come to me all who are weary and burdened. I'll give you, you'll find rest in me. I'll give you rest. And yeah. it's just really neat to think about that being a gift and not something that we just have to do. And we only have like two hours to do it because we fill our days up with everything. Um, but it's something he invites us into and says, trust me. Like, I, yeah. I've got you. Um, you're right where you're supposed to be. Just lean in and, and allow me to... Um, you know, take care of you. You're my child. Yeah, we are his kids. And when we look to him and we trust him, we're given, I really believe, clarity on the purpose that we have right here, right now. And I love going back to what you said at the beginning of our conversation, that our purpose doesn't have a pause because I... I I may have shared this before, maybe on the podcast. I don't know if I have though, but when I was in college, one of my professors walked through the difference between your purpose and your calling. And I had never thought about this, but it has been something that I just kind of tucked away and haven't forgotten. And your purpose is unchanging. Your purpose, hope is the same as my purpose, as the same as the incredible human tuning in to this conversation. (laughs) Like, and that is to love God, love people. It is to know the Lord and it is to make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to do what God has commanded. Like, that is our purpose. But our calling, that reveals the unique way that God has knit you hope. And the unique way that God has knit me and the unique positions that he puts us in and the unique seasons that he enters us into and the the giftings that he's given to us and the things that we're passionate about and the opportunities that he opens and the way that godly counsel continue to affirm us that we're doing what we were made uniquely to do. And so I want to just encourage you who are burnt out, like, don't be afraid to rest Know that it's not lazy and seek the Lord knowing that like what Hope said, your purpose is not on pause. You live out that so, purpose like, of loving God and loving people for the rest of your up. life. Yes. That unique calling, I really believe whenever we're intentional to seek the Lord and seek like godly wrote- counsel, he reveals to us the unique ways in which he has called us to live out that purpose in the current season that we are in. And it's refreshing. It's like, oh. I have purpose every single day in my life. Oh, God, show me the giftings that you've given me and show me what you would have me do today to live out the unique calling that you put on my life. It just brings so much refreshment because it's like, I'm always living out my purpose. God, show me what that uniquely looks like today. So good because it's like, you're never, you're never falling behind. Like when, yeah. when you're living 
like out the purpose, just like you said, with loving God and, and loving the people that he's placed you like in daily life, in your, yeah in the daily grind, wherever you are. I mean, nothing's getting lost. Nothing's losing traction. Like he is providing and working exactly where you are. Yes. Yes. And I, okay, Hope, like, I feel like this book that you have written on This Is My Happy Place, I think that it, I love this book, and I just truly believe that it's such a blessing, and so I would love for you to share with our listeners, like, what is your heart for this book, and where they can order it, how they can stay in tune with you. I know you mentioned that you have a book coming out, so how they can stay up to date with you on all the incredible things that the Lord is uniquely doing (laughs) in and through you. So it's called, This is My Happy Place, Finding God's Light. And essentially, I wrote this book like right after coming out of my season of burnout. So like I was sharing with you guys, and it kind of hit me and the Lord really placed this message on my heart to basically try to reframe and pivot the perspective of the happy place like we've been talking about being a location and just your everyday journey with him. And so really the book is 31 different devotionals. It'll have a devotional in it, reflective questions just to sit in stillness like we've been talking about and reflecting on where they're at. Then it has a positive statement for the day. um, And then it has some like practical ways to implement um, what we've talked about. And then like a really fun interactive portion. Me too. I love Junie. And it had like different activities and you could like, anyways, I try to make the book like that. So there's really fun ways just to be creative. I have really enjoyed going through the journal myself because I felt like sometimes the Lord gave me what I need in this season now. But really the book is just to kind of take you on this journey of drawing near to him. Because I think like I've shared it's interesting how all these, uh, what we've talked about has led up to this, but I just felt like um, I was in a place where I wasn't accepting his invitation. I didn't realize the grace that he was offering. So it's really just to kind of help you on that journey to draw near to him and then really to see the daily things that happen in our lives that are inevitable. Like there's going to be bad days. There's going to be things that we struggle with. That's just the reality of the broken world that we're in. So it's helping us find and seek after him and finding his light, even when we're not like in our happy place or some place that's glamorous, but just finding him in the situation. So it talks about comparison. It talks about burnout. It talks about shame, talks about, um, you know, ha- finding him at work, just all the different things that we encounter um, so that we can go from thinking that we're, you know, purposeless to purposeful because of who we are, because of who he is. So, Hope, that is incredible. Friends, y'all gotta go get This Is My Happy Place. Hope, thank you so much for being on the Have You Heard podcast. I love you so much. Guys, I just want to put a little snippet in here. Like, Hope is such a gift. I love her so much, and she is such an answer to prayer. And I just needed y'all, everyone listening, to know that. Oh my goodness, I feel the same way. And I (laughs) share this with MMA, but we actually are like... We are like two miles away from each other. Hope lives down the road, guys. It was crazy. Like, so um, one of our mutual friends had been praying over me to find a friend within five miles. And when Emma May and I grabbed coffee recently, our minds were blown because I was like, where do you live? We need to map this out. And literally like three, two to three miles, like yeah. crazy. So you are definitely an answered prayer. And I'm... So excited just for listeners to listen and hopefully this encourages um, those that are on the other side of this. I believe it will. Guys, We, me and Hope both love y'all so much. And I hope that the rest of your day is just lovely that you know how loved you are and that you know you were made to live a life of loving God and loving people. I'll talk to y'all next week.